Hello everybody. So today is lesson 26 and uh, this is one of those lessons that I have yet to read, believe it or not. So I'm uh, looking forward to sharing this, um, this lesson with all of you and see what Jesus has in store for us today. Um, so lesson 26 is my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. Hmm. So Jesus in this one thought is saying that we are invulnerable, meaning we are unharmable, but it is our attack thoughts that are attacking that we are invulnerable, that we are unharmable. Thus, because we have attack thoughts in our mind, we think we can be attacked. So to read through what Jesus has for us today, he is saying, um, it is surely obvious that if you can be attacked, you are not invulnerable. You see attack as a real threat. That is because you believe you can really attack. And what would have effects through you must also have effects on you. It is this law that will ultimately save you. But you are misusing it now. You must therefore learn how it can be used for your own best interests rather than against them. So I love that today's lesson brings up the idea of the law, because throughout the course lessons, we are going to be learning the law in fullness and completion. And the law in which is spoken of here is the law of giving as you would receive, that giving and receiving is the same. And so if we hold attack thoughts in our mind, we know that they are projected onto our outer experience, and therefore it is those attack thoughts that we are giving. And because we are giving those attack thoughts, we are going to receive those attack thoughts and thus believe that we can be attacked. And when we are in the mind of ego, in the mind of this dream, believing that this body is real, the main fearful thought of this body ego consciousness is that we can be harmed, is that we can be attacked, is that we can, you know, get made fun of and our feelings will be hurt, that someone could do something to us. You know, and uh, what we are learning is that nobody can do anything to us. It is only to the degree in which our thoughts think it is possible that we experience that it is possible. So this is allowing us to recognize that as we learn how to apply this law of giving and allow this law of giving to come through us from the love of God instead of the fear of ego is when attack releases from our mind and it will release from our experience and thus it will begin to release from our world. So we're learning to apply the law correctly in today's lesson and I love it. So as we continue, it says, because your attack thoughts will be projected, <laughs> you will fear attack. That's what I just said. And if you fear attack, you must believe that you are not invulnerable. That too is what I said. <laughs> attack thoughts, therefore, make you vulnerable in your own mind, which is where the attack thoughts are. Attack thoughts and invulnerability cannot be accepted together. Two totally different levels of consciousness. When we know ourselves to be inv invulnerable, we know ourselves to be harmless, we know ourselves to be perfect and whole and complete, and that nothing can affect us in any way. That is one whole complete thought system of soul, of truth, of God. But this other sy thought system <laughs> in which we are conditioned to believe and think and see through is that we are this body that can be attacked, experience harmful things, and ultimately die. And so we are trading one level of consciousness for the other to truly, wholly, and completely accept our invulnerability. And when we accept our invulnerability, it is void of attack thoughts. It is void of hate thoughts, right? And so that's what we're saying. Um, and the reason they cannot be accepted together is because they contradict each other. This is one of the main contradictions that we're becoming aware of in our mind and thus in our world. So it's beautiful. To continue. The idea for today introduces the thought that you always attack yourself. If attack thoughts must entail the belief that you are vulnerable, their effect is to weaken you in your own eyes. Thus they have attacked your perception of yourself. And because you believe in them, you can no longer believe in yourself. A false image of yourself has come to take the place of what you are. And um, what this is saying here is that when we believe that we can be attacked, or even that this world can be attacked, 
and when we believe that it means that we believe ourselves to be vulnerable because it is only in our weakness that we can be attacked in our strength we can't be attacked so it is when we think ourselves to be weak and vulnerable that we feel that we can be attacked and so what this is is we are then believing in a false self because the, the self that God created is whole and complete and unharmable and cannot be attacked. So this is showing us that we are accepting this false image of the self. And this false image of the self is taking place of what we really are. So this is a thought that opens us up to realize that, huh, maybe I really don't know myself yet. Maybe I am really thinking that, you know, I am weak and, and I'm vulnerable and I can be hurt or harmed. And if that's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm going to experience. So this allows us to become open to transforming our perception, to accept the thought that I'm whole and complete and unharmable and that attack is possible so that we can experience that that is true. All right. So Jesus is telling us now that there are six practice periods required for today. Only six. A full two minutes should be attempted for each of them, although the time may be reduced to a minute if the discomfort is too great. Do not, do not reduce it further. And the reason there might be discomfort is because ego doesn't like the thought of us questioning it. Ego doesn't like us looking past it. Ego doesn't like not being in control. So when we realize that there's a higher power that's in control, this higher vision of ourself that we can't yet see of ourself, it scares the shit out of ego, and it makes ego want to recoil and not do the course lessons and find everything wrong with it and say, no, but I gotta stand in my humanness, I gotta stand in my beliefs of what is true. So Jesus is saying, if you find that this resistance is coming up, that that's totally okay, but still stick with it for a minute. You don't need to do any less than a minute. And you don't need to do any more than a minute. Even set the timer on your watch if you need to. But allow yourself to simply just apply the thoughts. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to believe it. You don't even have to like it. Just apply it. And through the application is where experience happens. It says the practice period should begin with repeating the idea for today and then closing your eyes and reviewing the unresolved situations whose outcomes are causing you concern. So if there's particular situations in your life that cause you a concern, where you feel that you have been attacked, where you might be attacked, and where you have fear in any way, then we can allow the thought of today to be applied to these specifics. So it's saying, the concern may take the form of depression, of worry, anger, a sense of imposition, fear, foreboding, or preoccupation. Any problem as yet unsettled, which tends to reoccur in your thoughts during the day, is a suitable subject. So as we go throughout the day, since we have six practice periods of this one to two minute time frame of inward mind searching, we can become aware of where our thoughts are going, what we're being distracted by, and what it is that we're thinking about. So today's lesson can be applied to any of these thoughts wherever our mind goes during the day. So today is deep awareness of the mind. You will not be able to use very many for any one practice period because a longer time than usual should be spent with each one. So that's why at least one minute to two minutes with each thought that comes into your mind that is a fear or a worry or an anger or a depression or whatever it might be. Um, so it says, today's idea should be applied as follows. First name the situation. I am concerned about blank, blank insert situation there. Then go over every possible outcome which has occurred to you in that connection and which has caused you concern, referring to each one quite specifically, saying, I'm afraid that blank will happen. If you're doing the exercises properly, you should have some five or six distressing possibilities available for each situation you use, and quite possibly more. It is much more helpful to cover a few situations thoroughly than to touch on a larger number. So he's saying there might be a whole bunch of things that you can look at and that are bothering you and that are affecting you in your life right now. Um, but he says just focus on the few stronger ones that are more potent in your mind and that you find that you focus on the most. And um, so it's going to be quite specific in, in today. And with each question, I'm concerned about blah, 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 whatever our concern is. And I'm afraid that blah, blah, blah will happen. And the reason we do this is it carries us deeper into the levels of mind, allowing us to see the another level of what it is that we're actually thinking that we're afraid of. Right? This is uprooting it so we can see it as it is and finally have it undone where it is in the mind. As the list of anticipated outcomes for each situation continues, 
you will probably find some of them, especially those which occur to you towards the end, less acceptable to you. Try, however, to treat them all alike to whatever extent you can. After you have named each outcome of which you are afraid, tell yourself, that thought is an attack upon myself. Okay. Conclude each practice period by repeating today's idea once more. My attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. So Jesus is brilliant here by allowing us to bring up those attack thoughts that are in our mind and applying the lesson very, very, very specifically to each situation and then conclude it by saying, that thought is an attack upon myself. We need not believe it, understand it, like it, think it to be true right now. All of that is irrelevant, or irrelevant. As we apply it, we will have the experience that it is true. And then that is where we can celebrate in the changed mind, the changed perception of the peace and amazingness, amazingness of everything we want. So that is the lesson for today. It's quite awesome um, and powerful and potent. <laughs> um, my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. So there we have it. Enjoy the lesson for today, everybody. I love you and God bless.